welcome back. So, in previous lecture, we discussed about uh, the hot spot and how the hot spots can be taken into consideration uh, to help us in understanding the um, absolute motion of different plates. And so, uh, if you look at this uh, figure, uh, this more or less explains that how this volcanic chain that is Hawaiian island chain was formed and still the process is ongoing. So, the, the, the part of the plate is moving on the top of this that is the Pacific plate and at some point or at a particular point they, they, there exist a plume that is a magma body uh, which is supplying continuously the magma to the surface. And since the plate is in an absolute motion uh, at a particular velocity, this keeps moving on the top of this and so until it remains on, on above uh, this plume, then you will keep getting the, the magma uh, on the surface. And this is what they, they, they are talking about that this is an active uh, island. So, this, this island at present is an active which is having the source of magma coming out from the, the uh, hot spot lying underneath. And as the plate moves away from this hot spot, then uh, the, this uh, the, the volcanoes become extinct. And also what they found is that the, the age of this volcano which is sitting far away are older. For example, this one is 5.6 to 4.9 million years and 3.4 million years, 1.8 and so on. And at present, this is since last uh, 0 0.7 million years till present, this is now at, at, at this location. Now, another important uh, part which they, uh, they understood that the plate uh, can change its direction, that is the, uh, the movement, direction of the movement and this is, was, this was well, uh, identified by the change in the direction. So, they say that around uh, around 43 million years, uh, the, the plate changed a direction from its present uh, uh, direction what we are have we see now at present. So, uh, the Pacific plate has, has moved northwest over the Hawaiian hotspot. And the older one, uh, that is, those are the extinct volcanoes, are sitting away from the uh, the the active ones. Okay. And as I, I as I was talking about in the in the previous slides, that uh, these are the, uh, the this area are, are are receiving the or experiencing the earthquakes, whereas the uh, the islands which are sitting or the volcanoes which are sitting away from this hot spot doesn't also doesn't experience any any volcanoes. Uh, a seismic activity. So, second part that this, uh, this this plate is moving in a northwest direction over the Hawaiian hotspot, resulting in a chain of volcanic island and sea mounds. So, this was the sharp change in the direction, uh, which has been dated around 43 million years. So, based on this evidence or the signatures on the uh, on the Earth's surface or we can say on, on, on this earth, one can easily make out that when exactly uh, the, the plate changed its uh, direction. Now, coming to the, uh, the other part of uh, uh, the convergence plate boundary, as we, we discussed that it can be between the oceanic uh, continental and this example is from oceanic and oceanic plate itself. Okay. So, you have the oceanic plate as we, we discussed in the beginning that they are heavier as compared to the continental plates, but the older oceanic plates will be relatively heavier than the younger oceanic plate, hence the ocean, older oceanic plate will subject below the, uh, the younger ones. And similar features like we will have volcanic arcs on the overriding plate and the formation of the trench uh, along the along the boundary between the two plates 
uh, will will remain the same for in both the the configurations so b the best example which exists uh, uh, on the earth surface which indicates the deepest part on the earth that is the mariana trench uh, which is between uh, the philippine plate and the pacific plate it is located almost uh, like 400 kilometers southwest of uh, guam and this is responsible again for triggering a uh, large magnitude or mega thrust earthquakes uh, at the end of uh, this lecture we will discuss about different type of trenches because this is one trench which is uh, uh, different than the the uh, the chilean trench so we'll discuss at the end but in short what we would like to emphasize here is that this again the contact between the two plates that marks the trench uh, landform exist uh, that exist between these two plates is the deepest one which is around 11035 meters and that exists between the philippine plate and the pacific plate so the philip uh, the pacific plate is subtracting below the philippine plate so this you should remember and such trenches or the 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 regions which exist uh, like the subduction zones are responsible for triggering tsunamis also okay. and this is another example uh, which is one of the active region on the on the globe and that is sumatra andaman trench which was responsible for triggering uh, 2004 tsunami and the magnitude of earthquake was around 9.3 so this is the part of uh, uh, the indian side what we see here that is here the sumatra andaman trench so for us we 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 are concerned about that what is going to happen like in the, in the sense of the tsunami effect on this region because uh, this area of course will experience uh, ground shaking as well as this region to some extent it may uh, if you are having a very large earthquake then this region also will experience uh, ground shaking but this region will have an effect of land level change as well as the tsunami which will be uh, which is will affect the overall areas adjoining the indian ocean this is just to show you the uh, the alignment or maybe the orientation of all the uh, the seismic events which are uh, oriented or aligned along the uh, the trench areas and we are having another fault system which is sitting in the back arc region so this part we will talk when we are discussing more on the the tsunami part now coming to the continental continental convergence and collision okay. so uh, as um, i have been emphasizing right from the beginning that uh, that we we are concerned about the indian part of course we should understand what is happening uh, in the rest of rest uh, of, of the uh, the world but or on or on the globe but the, for us it is important because the hazard which we are talking about in terms of the the earthquakes or the secondary effects that is palusis uh, uh, the tsunamis or the ground shaking uh, for us it is important to know that what type of plate boundary exists around us so one is the the subduction zone as we have uh, i was um, talking in the, the previous slide and this is this one is the 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 zone which exists in the northern side is your continental continental convergence or collision so uh, uh, this uh, at at the currently we what we see is the uh, the the collision but earlier there was an convergence because the ancient oceanic plate was sitting in front of the uh, the indian uh, continental plate which subducted so at present what we see is that two continental plates of similar density so they will uh, they will neither uh, subduct or or with respect to one another okay so when the two continental meets uh, head on neither is subducted because continental rocks are relatively lighter and they 
So, at the time uh, when, when they collide, we will just see and uh, the emergence of or maybe we can say the crumpling of the material was of the overriding plate and, and the rising of the mountains or the building up of the mountains. So, the, the mighty Himalaya what we see is a result of the collision between the continental, uh, the Indian plate and the Eurasian plate in, in the north. So, type of convergent boundaries or collision zones if you take, uh, then we have uh, at least three, the Alps, the Himalaya and Appalachian. So, they, uh, they have resulted into the formation of spectacular mountain changes, ranges. Now, uh, looking further detail about the, uh, the Indian plate or the, and the Eurasian plate, the collision between that and those two. So, initially uh, there was an oceanic plate which subducted and that is one of the reason that we also see uh, in Himalayas, whatever the, the folded mountain uh, chain we have and the rocks which, which, which got folded uh, during this uh, uh, process uh, comprises igneous rocks also and we have some uh, signatures of the volcanic activity as well. So, this clearly indicates that initially we had oceanic uh, plate and in front of the, uh, the Indian uh, continental plate, we also had that, that the oceanic plate was covered by the Tethys Sea. And this uh, gigantic Himalayan belt which was produced was because of the collision between the two continental uh, plates. So, collision of two continental plates generally occurs after subduction of oceanic crust. Okay. The older or colder or denser plates may continue to sink. So, uh, this definitely it continues to sink, but there is no more uh, plate which is available and no volcanic activity will be seen on the overriding plate. So, collision promotes thickening and so this is important for us which we discussed in the beginning that the overriding uh, plate, continental plate will have, uh, will result into thickening of crust because we one, one way we are rising. So, this will also, uh, will, will be there. Okay. So, we will see the, uh, the up as well as down, we will see the rising as well as the thickening of the, of the plate. So, the Himalayas which are the highest mountain on uh, on any continent where, uh, the, where they were created by collision between the Indian and the Eurasian plate. So, this you should remember that this is between the collision between the Indian and the Eurasian plate. So, this cartoon also explains that initially what we had was the oceanic crust and if the oceanic crust is subducting below the continental crust or uh, we are having the oceanic crust here, but in this case what we are looking at the, the example of the Indian subcontinent, we, are ha we had oceanic crust before and subducting below the continental crust. So, at that time we had, a, we, we experienced the, the process of volcanic activity. So, formation of Himalaya basically this is the first stage uh, when the two plates uh, met each other and one subducted below the another one. Then later um, as uh, the movement remained this uh, uh, active, then there was a closure of the, the Tethys Sea and the overriding plate usually experienced more of deformation. Then finally, what we see is the closure of the ocean. So, if you see this ocean, which is what, what we call Tethys Sea, uh, closed down and then we had the, uh, the further rising up of the Himalaya and the drainages were formed and the, from the new sediments from the mountain were deposited in the basin. And this is what we, we now see is the Indo-Gangetic Plains. And in one of the slide, if you remember uh, in the beginning, we are talking about that one point is your uh, 
uh, that rising of the crust that will result into the formation of mountains. Then second that we will have thickening of crust and third after thickening we can say that and the rising we, 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 we will experience is the erosion. So, erosion will produce loose sediments and they will be deposited on either side okay, of the slope. So, deposition of huge amount will result into your subsidence. So, we definitely we will experience or we are still experiencing slight subsidence because of the overloading. So, these are few points which you should remember that is the rising of crust will result on the surface the formation of the mountains. Uh, so, that what you see here and then thickening of the crust erosion will result into the, the deposition of the sediments and subsidence. So, this part you should remember. Now, moving further what finally, we see is the present configuration between the, the two plates. So, we see uh, the thickening of the crust here, the crumpling of the material and and the deformed material is also sliding over the, uh, the continental plate. So, this side what we see as the, the Indian side and this is your uh, Tibetan side. Now, in such situation what type of earthquakes uh, we will experience because one thing is that initially as we were talking about that we had an oceanic crust which was subducting below. Uh, so, this subduction would have resulted into taking the oceanic lithosphere in the deeper part. So, we, we must have experienced the deeper earthquake occurring at the deeper portion of the crust, but now what we have is the only collision which is going on. So, mostly what we see is that we have the shallow earthquakes in this region and which are more dangerous in terms of when uh, the energy has been released. Okay. Along with that the, the formation of wedge in the frontal part is again and uh, the portion of um, like uh, which will trigger more earthquakes in the shallow portion. So, further uh, quick details about the Himalayas. So, Himalaya was almost sitting way south from equator and it had like the oceanic plate as well as uh, the the Tethy Sea in the front of uh, front of the plate that is the continental plate. Okay. So, about 8 million years ago India was located almost like 6500 to 7000 kilometers south of the Asian continent that is further uh, towards south of uh, the equator. Moved northward as the rate of around 9 meter per century. Indian plate collided with the um, Asian or Eurasian plate at about 40 to 50 million years or around 55 million years ago. Its northward movement slowed down by about half. So, uh, scientists uh, suggested that uh, the, the, the this marks or uh, either you say in some literature you will find 40 to 50 and some literature you will find 55 also. So, uh, around this period the movement which was around like 9 meter per century was reduced to half almost and this a reduction of the movement from 9 uh, meter 
to half of that, say around 4.5 meter per year, was been uh, like is it, uh, related to your collision. So, the collision and associated decrease in the rate of plate movement are interpreted to mark the beginning of the rapid uplift of Himalayas. So, this the, the collision was responsible for the reduction of the, uh, the velocity to half and at the same time the landform which was formed what we see is the, if the starting point of the formation of giant Himalayas. The mighty Himalayas almost like covering the area of 2900 kilometers from east to west is a creation of plate tectonic forces which resulted from continental continental collision. So, this is again another cartoon which shows and there was a small in the like uh, the plate which also was compressed in between these two plates is the Lhasa uh, plate. So, overall uh, configuration if you look at then we have the, uh, the trench area uh, in the east and further south here which goes and probably connects here okay. and then we have the collision zone of Himalaya. And the, the most in interesting part what we see here is that uh, the, the eastern edge of the Himalaya and the western edge of the Himalaya are showing two different type of movement. Okay. So, one is where the, uh, the right hand side block along this fault line okay, or the, uh, the line of contact between the two plates is moving towards uh, towards right and this is moving towards left actually. So, this is this showing what we call the right lateral movement, it is here it is opposite this is what we have the left lateral and along this zone where we see of course, this is also part of Himalayas and this also part of Himalaya, but here we see almost the, the collision that is we see thrust movement. Okay. So, uh, here we have almost both the plates are colliding like that and the cartoon on the right explains that when the Indian plate collided with the Asian uh, or you can say the Eurasian plate then there were many fractures or the weak zones which were formed and were responsible for accommodating the, the deformation. And this is what we see at present that we have the Indochina part, this is the Indochina part which is extruding towards east and southeast and the, the part of what we uh, see in the Chaman fault system that is Pakistan area is is moving in this direction. Okay. So, and the portion here that is the Tibetan part <coughs> is getting extruded further in the eastern side or southeast side. So, this is the pattern of deformation we have and for us as I have been uh, repeating again and again that from, uh, this whole zone is vulnerable to earthquakes. So, we have the subduction zone here, collision zone and subduction zone here. So, transform fault margins uh, as we are looking at very much similar to this one. Okay. So, these are the transform faults we are having. So, uh, such faults ma fault margins uh, are those along uh, which are uh, between the two plates which grind past each other. So, in a horizontal direction. So, one is what we see as that there is an overriding one. Okay. So, this plate is overriding the, the other one that is uh, 
this is moving in this direction, this is moving in this direction. This, so, this goes down and this keeps on overriding this one. So, this is one type of boundary which we have in and another one will have just the uh, for example, if I draw two blocks then you have So, you have the movement like this. Okay. So, along this zone. So, this is another type of boundary switch we have and this is termed as your transform plate, plate boundary. So, direction may be uh, different also in the sense the uh, the right lateral or left lateral as we were talking about in the in form of the eastern part we are having the that is what I was showing here is that the eastern part we are having right lateral and the western part we are having the left lateral moment. So, the, the this direction can vary from place to place. Now, this margins involves strike slip faulting this we will come into uh, like we will talk in detail when we are talking about the different type of faults, but they are basically the uh, the this termed as in strikes the fault and they are mostly in the shallow lithosphere and often a border shear zone deeper in the lithosphere. So, most transform fault occurs underwater between oceanic plate and one of the best example if we look at about the uh, this one is your uh, mid oceanic ridges okay. along the mid oceanic ridges we have most of the transform faults which are setting uh, nevertheless we have also a very good example uh, between the pacific plate and north american plate again we have the transform boundary but along with the transform fault margin we also see or experience there uh, the thrust moment and that is the subduction. So, two of earth's most notorious and dangerous transform faults are on land. So, one is the northern Antolian fault in Turkey and then second one is the San Andreas fault in California. These are most dangerous fault on, on the earth and those uh, faults are your transform faults or you can also say the strikes the fault. So, I will end here and we will continue in the next lecture.